this list in our number 10 spot, we have the story of Carol Chase McKelleny. One day in 2006, Carol was driving through San Bernardino, California on her way to Paris, California, where she was going to stay for a few days. On her travels, she saw a sign for Riverside, which was nearby, and she decided that since her family had roots there, maybe it was time to stop in for a visit. As she went into Riverside, she realized that everything looked different from how she remembered it and was unable to find her old house that she grew up in. She tried to go to the street that her grandmother used to live on, but that one was different too. And when she tried to visit her grandparents' graves at the cemetery, the whole place didn't even exist. Even the people who were living in the town gave Carol a bad feeling, and she didn't even want to get out of her car. She decided she would just be better off continuing on her trip and left Riverside. Carol didn't end up returning to Riverside until a few years later, after her dad had passed and she was attending the funeral. To Carol's surprise, when she went to Riverside this time, everything was as she remembered it from her childhood. Carol believes that day that she ended up in some sort of parallel universe form of Riverside, and she even said that she felt like if she left her car that day, she was going to get stuck there. In our number nine spot, we have this story from Peru. The Marcoasi forest in Peru has been called a doorway to another dimension for centuries because of all the stone figures that resemble human faces and religious figures, and because of the amount of people who go missing and never get found. There was a group of friends who decided to enter the forest despite all of these stories, and they ended up stumbling upon a cabin that appeared to have some sort of party going on inside. As the group went up to the cabin, they saw people inside, but all of the people were in 17th century garb, and nothing that was modern or similar to what the group of friends was wearing. One of the friends began to try and enter the cabin, and was halfway in the door when the friends quickly pulled her back. After being pulled out, it was discovered that the half of her body that had entered the cabin was now paralyzed. If her body really did become paralyzed because it had entered another dimension, that would definitely explain all of those strange stone statues. In our number 8 spot, we have the old story of the green children of Woolpit. In the 12th century, it is said that two children were discovered just outside of Woolpit, Great Britain, but what was so weird about them is that they had green skin. When the children were brought back into the city and given food and water, they refused to eat anything other than raw beans. Eventually, their green skin began to fade and turned into a more normal human color. One of the children passed away, but the girl continued to grow and eventually learned English. When she was finally able to communicate with those around her, she told the story of how her and her brother had come from a place that was in constant darkness called St. Martin's Land. Everyone from her town lived underground, and everyone had the same green skin. The girl and her brother were wandering around one day when they came across a cave, and they decided to enter. They kept walking and eventually came to Woolpit, and when they turned around, the cave they had been in disappeared. Did this cave act as a portal to an alternate reality for these kids? If so, I don't ever want to end up where they come from because it does not sound nice. Guys, before I continue on in this list, make sure you hit that like button because it really helps us out. In our number seven spot today, we have the story of James Richards. In 2009, James was walking his dog when he tripped and knocked his head, rendering him unconscious. When he woke up, he found himself beside some sort of machine he didn't recognize, and there was another man named Jonas who said he had just found James' body while he was on a work trip for the interdimensional travel company that he worked for. What? The two ended up striking up some sort of conversation, I guess like you would when someone just casually tells you that they travel through dimensions for work. They started chatting about what pop culture was like in each of their dimensions, and they came to discover that, of course, the Beatles existed in both of their dimensions. Jonas ended up explaining that in his dimension, the Beatles were all still alive, and they had never actually broken up. Jonas gave James a cassette tape of the Beatles music from his dimension that certainly does not exist in ours. When James returned to our universe, he ended up uploading the tape to a website called The Beatles Never Broke BrokeUp.com. In our number six spot, we have a story from Reddit that was posted by the user 2 Folk. 
One day, the writer was driving home from school and began trying to call their boyfriend using the hands-free feature. The phone didn't end up ringing even after five separate attempts, so they turned the phone off and then on again and tried one more time. This time, the boyfriend answered, but it didn't really sound like the person they knew and loved, and they also sounded like they were pretty freaked out. He said, Liz, is this you? Liz kept saying hello, but wasn't getting an answer, and panicked and hung up the phone. Liz tried calling again twice, but there was no ring again. Luckily, on the third try, another voice picked up the phone and asked, is this better? Liz then asked who this was, and the voice responded with something unintelligible, and then they hung up. Liz continued to call the boyfriend until he picked up the phone. Sounding significantly more like himself and not panicked at all, Liz asked who was picking up the phone earlier, and the boyfriend explained that no one had picked up the phone because he had never received any other calls. When Liz got home and checked the boyfriend's call log, they realized that only one call had gone through to his phone. Liz made sure that they were dialing the right number when they were calling, and it was the correct number every single time. Who had been answering the boyfriend's phone? At our number five spot and halfway mark, we have another Reddit post from Tiger King Quinton. The user explains that this story takes place when they were eight years old in Florida with their family and their friend's family for a two week vacation. The friend really wanted to go to Wet n Wild and begged for his parents to take them there, so they ended up going one day during the trip. The boy and his dad ended up going into the wave pool that day and were mainly staying in the shallow area. After a while, a larger wave comes their way and it takes the boy underneath the water. He realizes he can't feel the bottom anymore and begins to panic trying to break the surface of the water. When he reaches the top and gets his head out of the water, he realizes that he is no longer at wet and wild, but is in the middle of an ocean a couple hundred meters from an island. He doesn't know where or what this island is, but after a few seconds he begins to feel lightheaded and sinks back into the water. Luckily he then feels some hands under his arms and he realizes his dad is lifting him out of the water back at wet and wild, asking him if he's alright. Maybe this wave pool really did take this kid to an alternate dimension. In our number 4 spot we have a story coming from Tokyo in 1954. At the Haneda airport, a plane from Europe landed and dropped off its passengers. As the passengers made their way through customs, one man told the officials that he was just on a normal business trip that he made regularly. He spoke French as his first language, but could also speak Japanese and a few other languages. Officials then asked him where he was from, and his response is where things take a turn. He said he was from a place called Torrid, which was on the border between France and Spain. When officials told him that the place didn't exist, he gave them a passport that had been issued by this country that isn't real. This passport had also been stamped, validating all of the previous trips he had said he went on, including his previous trips to Japan. Officials called the company that he said he was meeting with, and the company said that they had never heard of him or his company before. They then called the hotel he said he had a reservation at, and the bank that was listed on his checkbook. The hotel said that there was no reservation for him, and the bank just didn't exist at all. Officials thought that maybe he was confused, so they showed him a map and pointed to the country of Andorra, asking him if this is what he meant. The man began to get upset, saying that Andorra didn't exist and that it had misplaced Torrid where he claimed to be from. Customs decided to detain the man and put him in a hotel room for the night while they decided what to do next. The next day when they went to collect the man, he had totally disappeared with all of his personal identification and documents. Police searched for this missing man, but he was never found. Maybe this man somehow accidentally found himself in a parallel universe separate from his own, and I just hope he was able to make it back to wherever he was from and return to his normal life. In our number three spot, we have the story of a man named Jafar Vorin. Jafar was a strange man who just appeared in a village one day before he was picked up by authorities. The language he spoke was closest to German, but even then it wasn't quite the same. Jafar said he was from a place called Sakria and that he was searching for his brother who had been lost in a shipwreck. He couldn't point out where he was from, but was able to tell authorities some geographical information about where he had come from. He explained that his home had five separate compartments or continents called Sakria, 
Aflar, Aslar, and Uplar. He couldn't show anyone how he had arrived at the village, and he had no idea how to get home, so he just ended up living out the rest of his life in Berlin. It's crazy to think that maybe he was a man from another dimension, and he ended up just getting stuck here. I feel bad for him, and I wish we could have helped him return home. In our number two spot, we have the story of Pedro Ramirez. Pedro was driving from a place called Seville to his home in Alcala de Guadera on a November night in 1986. As he went around a curve in the road, he suddenly found himself on a six lane highway and as he continued to drive straight, he saw tall buildings, unidentified structures and grass that was two feet tall growing alongside the road. These were all things that were out of the ordinary for that area. He continued driving and suddenly Pedro heard a voice that told him he had been transferred to another country in a different hemisphere. Pedro didn't know what to do, so he kept driving for another hour before stopping on the side of the road to take a look around. After a short break, he began driving again, only to come across a sign with three arrows pointing in different directions. One was labeled Malaga, the other was Sevilla, and the last was Alcabala. Pedro decided to take the Sevilla route and after driving down it for a while, he stopped again. When he pulled over and got out of the car, he stood there for a second, and then when he looked back to his left, he saw he was standing right outside of his home. He tried to go back to where he had been before, but couldn't find anything that he had seen before, including the sign with the three arrows. Who knows where Pedro was for that while, but I'm very glad that he ended up making it home safely. In our number one spot today, we have the story of Lorena Garcia. One morning in 2008, Lorena woke up in a life that was similar to the one she was living when she went to sleep, but certainly not the same. At first, it was just small things like her bed sheets and her pajamas, but when she got to work, things began to escalate. Lorena realized that her office wasn't her office and that she worked in the same building, but in a completely different department. She had never even met her boss before, so she knew that this couldn't have been a moment where she just got lost or confused. When she returned home after work that day, she was met by her ex-boyfriend, only to find out that he was apparently her current boyfriend. She tried to find the person that she had been dating for months but he didn't seem to exist in this new life and world that she found herself in. Lorena began to seek psychiatric help because she was fearing that she was having some sort of nervous breakdown, but all tests revealed that she seemed to be of sound body and mind. The strange occurrences continued when Lorena asked her family how her sister was doing. Lorena knew that her sister had recently had shoulder surgery and wanted to check in, but when she asked her family, they were baffled by her claims and insisted that there was no surgery that had taken place on anyone in the family. Lorena couldn't find any answers to her situation and was having no luck with a medical explanation either. She is convinced that she went to sleep one night and woke up in a parallel universe that was altered slightly by small decisions that she had made. Honestly, after all of these stories, I kind of believe Lorena too. Number 10, the London Hammer. Many times in history, people have found objects that they think could be evidence of a parallel universe intersecting with our own. Those thoughts were raised again when in 1936, a hammer was found in London, Texas. While on a walk, a couple found a hammer that looked like ones that had been used in the late 1800s. So cool, they found an old hammer. Well, there's actually much more to it. The hammer had not rusted at all and still hasn't since it's been found. And it was also found encased in rock that dated back to the Cretaceous period. For those of you who don't know, that's around 100 million years ago. This is obviously weird because most people agree that humans only started popping up around 200,000 years ago. So how could this hammer have come to exist? Some people believe that it's the remnant of a parallel universe where humans developed long before they did on our Earth, or that it had potentially traveled back in time. If you if you live in Texas and want to check out this infamous hammer for yourself, you can find it at Carl Bowes Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, Texas. Number 9. Black Holes 
The existence of black holes is one of the greatest yet unexplained wonders of our universe, the first picture of a black hole only having been taken back in 2019. So how are they evidence of parallel universes? Well, let's get into some science here. Black holes are so hard to study because everything we've sent out there to try and get information is never seen again, people assuming that it's destroyed upon entering the hole. But Stephen Hawking said that whatever enters a black hole does come out, but it comes out out in another universe. Because of the law of conservation of mass, even if something is destroyed, evidence of its presence would still be able to be seen. They would be visible in hair-like images that trace its path into the black hole. But Stephen Hawking noticed that evidence showed these hairs were not present, meaning the item has completely disappeared from our universe. And I'm really hoping this is making sense. Stephen Hawking says that this is good evidence that they have been transported to another universe, saying black Black holes are not the eternal prisons that we once thought. Number 8. Cloud City In October of 2015, Chinese citizens were shocked by what appeared to be a floating city within the sky. Multiple people taking photos and videos of the cityscape that seemed to loom above them within the clouds. The shape was far too specific to brush it off as being anything man-made, and looked to clearly be a cloud city. People were left wondering what it could be, and theories popped up of parallel universes, or even secret holographic technology. There was no time to answer these questions or speculate if it had even happened at all as the exact same thing took place again in China in March of the following year. More photos and videos popping up again of the incident. Many people believe that this supposed city in the sky is evidence of another universe crossing over into our own. Feel free to take a look at the pictures for yourself and make your own decision. Number 7. Deja Vu Have you ever been walking down the street and gotten the sudden feeling like you'd done that before even though you haven't? This is a phenomenon that is known as deja vu or already seen. As of yet, there is no real scientific explanation for why people all over the world experience these feelings. And there are theories that range from memory problems to glitches in the matrix. People who believe that deja vu is evidence of parallel universes describe it like this. Think of a radio where you can only hear one frequency at a time. The parallel universes beside us are at different frequencies, however it's possible that for one small moment, the universes might vibrate at the same frequency and become in sync. Since parallel universes are all supposedly just slightly different, when these in sync moments happen and you believe that you've already had this conversation before, it's possible that you feel that way because you did, just in a parallel universe. Number 6. The Double Slit Experiment Ok, this one is very sciencey, so bear with me. The Double Slit Experiment was performed in the 1920s and seemed to offer convincing evidence evidence of potential multiple parallel realities. The theory proposes that if tennis balls were fired at a wall through a single slit, then the marks on the wall would line up with the slit. So if you created two slits, it would create two lines on the wall. And if you fired waves through the wall, they would go through the splits, but still continue to spread out and leave multiple lines on the wall. And electrons should theoretically act in the same way that tennis balls do, but they didn't. They also made multiple lines as though they they had been interacting with each other in the way that the waves did. But even when fired one at a time, it still made two sets of waves. For this to happen, it would mean that each electron somehow managed to travel through both slits. When they tried to film the electrons, they instead went back to just forming two lines like tennis balls. So this suggests that while parallel universes may be interacting with our own, we just don't have the technology to see it. Number 5. The Blue Rock Alright, after that, let's go to something way more simple. In fact, let's go to something as simple as a rock. In 1990, in Sierra Leone, West Africa, an archaeologist found a puzzling bright blue stone. When it was sent for studies, it was found that it was not similar to anything that could be found on Earth, and it was determined that it was not from this planet at all. One person who once held the stone said, It was perplexing and I had no idea what I was looking at, and I had no point of reference to compare it to anything else I had previously seen or handled before. Parts of this stone have come into the possession of many many collectors over the years, and it is incredibly highly valued, likely because many people believe that similarly to the London Hammer, this is an artifact that has traveled to our own Earth 
from a parallel universe. Number four, the Mandela Effect. The term the Mandela Effect first came around in 2009, when a woman named Fiona realized that she and many others shared a false memory of Nelson Mandela having died in prison, when in reality he was still alive. She created a website to explain her observance of this phenomenon, shocked by just how many people all over the globe could possibly share this false memory. Over the years, many people have come together to share different examples of this Mandela effect. Some of the most famous ones being the spelling of the Bernstein Bears title, Darth Vader saying Luke I am your father instead of no I am your father, and Curious George having a tail. Many people believe that a possible explanation for this is that the false memories are correct, but they're correct in a parallel universe, the memories bleeding over into our own world, as how else could so many people share this same fake memory. Number 3, the cold spot. Alright, back to science once again. When the Big Bang created our universe, the wavelengths of light expanded, changing the color and temperature of the universe to what we now perceive as black, creating the cosmic microwave background which maps the creation of our universe according to the Big Bang. While scientists were studying this background, they discovered what they referred to as the cold spot, being the size of 1.8 billion light years. While also being colder, it apparently also contains 20% less matter than it should. So how could they possibly explain the existence of this cold spot and why it is the way that it is? Well, experts believe that this is evidence of a parallel universe having crashed into ours through quantum entanglement, impact forcing energy out of the area and leaving behind the cold spot. Number 2, the Hadron Collider. Researchers at the Super Collider in Switzerland started researching in 2015, hoping to find evidence of alternate universes. They have done various different tests trying to find these parallel universes that would not exist in the visible three dimensions of our own universe, but instead be made up of dimensions that we cannot perceive. One scientist theorized that the Hadron Collider could reveal particles that could only exist in these other dimensions, and being able to see them would give us almost undeniable evidence of the existence of parallel universes in line with our own. She said that these particles would have the exact same properties of particles in our own universe, but would have greater mass. All of this is still theoretical right now, but plenty of theoretical things from the past have been discovered and made reality, so it may not be long. Number 1. The Towered Traveler In 1954, a European plane landed in Tokyo. On the plane was a man who spoke several different languages, and he told the people there that he was visiting on business. He then gave them his passport, which said that he was coming from a place called Towered. If you've never heard of this country, then don't worry, you're not alone. That's because it doesn't actually exist, and it's a fictional country that is in between the borders of France and Spain. The man's passport was visa stamped, and he even provided a bank statement from the Tau Red Bank. His documents were taken and held in airport security, while the man was left in a guarded hotel room waiting for police to arrive. But when they got there, the man was gone. People believe that this man was a visitor from a parallel universe where European history was different and led to the creation of the country of Taurus. Moving on to number 9 now, we have the missing boyfriend. This is a story I found online about a woman called Lenia Barcia from Madrid. One morning she woke up in her apartment and things just seemed off. It was the same place she knew, but items were out of place and didn't belong there. Before she had time to figure that out though, there was a more pressing issue. Her boyfriend was gone. She looked for his phone number, but that was gone too. In a panic, she asked her friends, and to her horror, they didn't know who she was talking about. She called the police to file a missing persons report, but they told her there were no records of that person at all. A psychiatrist told her that she was hallucinating due to stress, but Lania disagreed. When she talked to her family about the whole thing, they didn't seem to remember the same things as she did, like her sister's recent shoulder operation. They said it never even happened. At work, she was in the same company, but a different department altogether. She told her supervisor, who she'd never met before, that she felt ill and needed to go home. Eventually, Lania was declared mentally ill. She had no history of substance abuse or mental illness at all. By all accounts, her experience was a complete mystery. Lania maintains that she believes she slipped from her own universe to a very slightly different one. Moving on to number 8 now, we have Carol Chase McElhenney. In March 2006, Carol Chase McElhenney 
Annie was driving from San Bernardino to California to take her dog to some sheepdog trials. On the way, she visited Riverside, a small town where her family had lived for years when she was a kid, and her grandparents were also buried there in the local cemetery. As soon as she made the decision to go there, though, she smelt cigar smoke in the car. It was just like the only memory she had of her grandfather, who died when she was a young child. Very strange. After the sheepdog trials, she headed back to Riverside, but something wasn't right. The cemetery where her grandparents were buried was just an overgrown patch of weeds. She couldn't find her childhood home, or any of her family's homes in fact. The houses were different, but their numbers were still correct. The main road in the town was different too, full of scary looking people and with different buildings. On the other hand, the local school and the college did look the same. Some things were identical. Carol left Riverside convinced that she had slipped into a parallel universe. A few years later, Carol's father died and was buried in the Riverside Cemetery. When she went there for the funeral, she found the town had returned to the one that she remembered as a child, and she never encountered the alternate dimension Riverside again. At the number 7 spot now, we have The Castle. This is a story that was shared to the Glitch in the Matrix subreddit by user John30859. He said, Me, my cousin, and my aunt were all outside on the front porch playing. We were all the same age, around 4 to 5. Two teenagers approached us and asked if we wanted to see a castle. I knew this was bad news, but my cousin had to go see it, so we both agreed to follow. We went into the woods and walked along a trail for what felt like an eternity, probably 20 minutes or so realistically. We arrived to find a beautiful, gleaming, majestic castle in the distance. I'm talking something you would see in the movies. The place was made of heaven. It literally shined as if we entered a city of wealth. We excitedly looked at each other and sprinted home to tell our parents. The teenagers stayed behind. They never chased or followed. Our run back was instantaneous, as if it took a few seconds compared to the walk there. We go and tell my mom, and obviously she is freaked out, and tells us no more playing outside for the day. Here's the thing though, my mom was so incredibly strict on me, that she would have never let me go out of her sight for longer than a minute. The door to the front porch was open, so there's no way two random teenagers could have actually taken us into the woods, let alone anywhere without one of our parents seeing. My mom and my cousin's mom were the two adults home at the time. I've spoke to my mom about this multiple times. There's no church or anything nearby that we could have mistaken to be a castle. I've even looked as an adult. No luck. All three of us remember this phenomenon. I'm 25 now, so it's been 20 years, but we've spoken about this at the age of 6, 8, 12, 15, etc. Essentially, every time we see each other, we all remember, always have. I know some will chalk this up as kids imagining things, but I swear to you that this was real. Moving on to number 6 now, we have the second chance. This one comes from reddit user Red Leaders. It's been one of the most popular stories posted to the glitch in the matrix subreddit, and you're about to see why. It starts with him walking along a trail. He said, The trail leads up to a set of abandoned train tracks on the other side, which sits about 15 feet above the path and a pond below. I was crossing the train tracks when I decided I wanted some ice cream. The fastest way to get to the ice cream shop was to take the path below the train tracks, but there isn't any easy way to cross the pond without going all the way back around and, being 14 years old, I decided that I could just jump from the tracks onto the path below and keep walking. Looking down from above, it didn't seem to be that far of a jump. So that's what I did. The next thing I remember after that was being half conscious in an ambulance. Everything was extremely blurry and the paramedics sounded slightly panicked. I wasn't able to move either of my legs, so I think they were broken. This scene continued on for a few minutes until we arrived at a hospital and I was wheeled into the emergency room on a stretch chair. I only had a few minutes in the emergency room before I eventually lost all consciousness and that was the last thing I saw. After I'd been unconscious for what felt like about an hour, I opened my eyes and I was on the ground. I just hit the ground again after jumping, but this time I was fully conscious. I hadn't noticed this before I jumped, but there had been a car parked watching me. I think they thought I was attempting it probably looked that way, and the people in it had jumped out and called an ambulance for me. The ambulance ride had been the exact same as it was the first time, and I was put into the same emergency room that I had died in before. The only difference between the two events was that I was fully conscious this time, and my injuries were much more minor. I was discharged from the hospital the same night, with only stitches on my lip, a slightly fractured jaw, and a mild concussion. For a while after this, I assumed that the first scenario had just been a weirdly coincidental dream that I'd had while I was unconscious, so I didn't consider 
consider it anything abnormal. It wasn't until a few weeks later when my mom told me that the people who had helped me said that I had been conscious the entire time, I hadn't been knocked out after hitting the ground or anything. Next up at number 5 now, we have the Philadelphia Experiment. According to rumours, in 1943 the US Navy made a ship phase out of existence and reappear somewhere else entirely. They were experimenting with the use of large electrical generators to bend light around objects so that they would become completely invisible. Clearly a huge advantage in any military situation. They tested it on the USS Eldridge and reportedly made the ship disappear in front of dozens of witnesses. But it wasn't just a trick of the light. The story goes that they not only made it disappear, they also teleported it. The ship vanished in a flash of blue light and then reappeared over 200 miles away in Norfolk, Virginia before then returning to Philadelphia soon after. The crew were said to have suffered horrific side effects though. There were reports of sailors who had become fused used into the metal on the ship. Some of them just disappeared forever and others went clinically insane. Moving on to number 4 now, we have the scolding. This is one I found on reddit from Cassie Cuppy Cake. This is a short one, but it caught my eye and I want to hear your thoughts on it. She said, my husband works third shift, graveyard if you will. We have two girls, 7 and 3. They usually wake up to say goodnight to dad before he heads to work. My husband had just left for work and I was in the kitchen, cleaning up before bed as it was around 10.45pm. I hear the girls arguing and messing around the little one cries and I'm thinking I want to finish the dishes before I break this up. I hear stop it now in my husband's distinct tone and the girls stop right away. I think that's really weird. Maybe he forgot something and slipped in and I didn't hear because the water was running. So as I turn the corner to check and see what he's doing home, I'm met by two girls that are both expecting to see their dad around the corner. Where's daddy? I don't know what to say. I freeze. I say, well, let's get to bed and stop fighting like dad said. So I tuck them in and then I look outside. The car isn't in the driveway. He's not home. I text him and he was at work the whole time. Does anyone have any theories on that? Please. Please. Moving on to number 3 now, we have Gideonton Canyon. We're going back to May 1972 for this one, where four girls were driving across the desert border from Utah to Nevada one night. A fork in the road appeared. They went left and went through Gideonton Canyon. After a while, the road changed to white cement. Now they thought they had gone the wrong way, and so they turned around. As soon as they turned around though, on their way back to the fork, the scenery was totally different now. The desert was gone, and in its place were lush trees and fields all around them. Suddenly one of the girls screamed. A group of egg shaped vehicles with three wheels and blaring lights started chasing after them. They managed to escape and get back to the familiar desert but had to stop when they ended up with three flat tyres. They were picked up by a state trooper the next day who was sceptical about their story until he found that the girls tyre tracks had just stopped at one point and he couldn't see them go any further had they slipped into another world. Next up at number 2 now we have the third floor. This one comes from reddit user Zashiba who shared their story on a thread discussing the existence of parallel universes. They said, I once went to a conference held at Portland State University. There were a few floors to the building we were in. My teacher had assigned us buddies we were to stick with. I was paired with a guy named Jacob. It's important to note that at the time of the conference, PSU was undergoing a modernization of the building. So new paint, new rugs, new doors, remodeling of various rooms. Jacob and I were on the second floor and our next meeting was on floor. Or three. So instead of taking the stairs, we took the elevator. We were the only two on the elevator. When we arrived on floor three, the doors opened on a dark floor. No lights were on. The hordes of people gone. It was silent. Jacob and I stepped off the elevator onto the floor and looked for our room. We found it, but it was closed, locked and dark. All the doors that left that wing were locked and it was dark beyond them. Looking out of the windows, there were no cars out on the street. No one playing hacky sack on the grass. The whole world outside was just still. The doors to the stairs were closed and the floor hadn't been renovated yet. Old carpet, old wallpaper from the 70s or some forgotten era. The elevator door stayed open the entire time Jacob and I explored the floor. We decided we must be in the wrong area, so we hopped back into the elevator and went back to floor 2. Upon arriving, we found ourselves back in the thick of things. People everywhere, doors open, lights on, renovation going on. We found our teacher and told her that we tried to find the room but floor 3 was dark. She said she was just on floor 3 and it was fully engulfed in activities. Jacob and I looked towards the stairs and saw people going up and coming down as if nothing was wrong. So we took the stairs to floor 3. What we found fully confused the hell out of us. It was exactly the floor we were just on. 
but it was fully renovated. New carpet, new paint. The whole floor was lit up and a buzz with activity. Rooms were open, people milling about. Doors to other wings opened with people passing in and out. Outside cars were zooming by. People were reading on the grass, playing frisbee, kicking around hacky sacks. We found our room. The very same room that moments ago was closed, locked and dark. Now it was open, lit and had people chatting at tables. To this day, I'm not sure what I experienced. Perhaps they were renaming the floors European style and hadn't updated the elevator yet. I'm not sure at all. And finally at number one now, we have Pedro Ramirez. That's the name of this Spanish man who was driving from Seville to Alcala. It was late at night on November 9th, 1986. Pedro had done this drive many times before and was familiar with the scenery along the way. That's why he bolted upright in his chair when everything around him changed. He found himself on a six lane highway. That wasn't normal. On his left was a huge industrial complex that he'd never seen before. On his right he saw new houses. There was dense grass on either side. A feeling of heat came over him and he heard a choir of distant voices. One of these ethereal voices specifically told him that he was now in another dimension. He continued his drive until he found a sign and before he knew it he was at his home in Alcala. Starting off at number 10 now we have the death. This one comes from Reddit user DQ Supervisor who said, okay this is going to sound crazy but I can't find a better explanation. I was driving down County Road 28 just outside of my city. The road is basically a straight line for a bit and I watched a car driving toward me in the opposite lane. It had blue headlights and as it got closer I saw that it was a black two door car. As the car got up to me, it hit me head on. I saw my windshield smash. I saw the car roll over mine. I smelled the smoke. I felt all of the pain. I closed my eyes. I think I died. Then I opened them again and I was in the same spot as I was less than about a minute before this person hit me. I saw the same car with the same blue headlights. As it got closer, I saw it was a two door black car. I was freaking out because this car had just hit me a minute before for, but it just kept on driving past and did not hit me. I 100% believe that that car did hit me. I will be finding another way to drive home from now on. Has anybody else experienced this? I do not have another explanation. All input and questions welcome. I must have got pushed from that universe into this one. Maybe not. I don't know anything about this stuff, but nothing else makes sense. At the number nine spot now, we have the passengers. This one came from Mark of Shame on Reddit. For some reason, this one felt really real to me. They said, driving home on a storm day, I see that a side road up to the local golf course is blocked off by flashing barricades. I also spy a Mercedes parked past the barricade with its hazards on. I stop and walk up to the car to see if they need help. I'm an EMT. I shine my light into the back seat to see a man slumped over, apparently asleep. Thinking I've got a few drunks, I move up to the driver window and rap on the glass and shine my light in. The driver is sitting bolt upright, unmoving, staring straight ahead. My window wrapping or light doesn't cause him to blink, flinch or move. I look over and the passenger is slumped forward onto the dash. This begins to creep me out. I call down to the sheriff's station and request a code 2 unit up to my location to help me check them out because the doors are locked. While on the phone I walk back to the truck to get my go bag. As I'm on the phone with dispatch she asked me to get a license number for the car just as a PG&E cherry picker truck comes rumbling down from up the closed road. I move to go around the truck to get the plate number and the car is gone. I talk to the driver of the truck and he said there was an 80 foot tree down across the road and that he didn't think it to be open for at least a day or so. So the question is where the hell did the car go? Tree up one way, barricades down the other. It's kept me a bit unsettled when stopping at accidents and hazards ever since then. Coming at number 8 now we have changing faces. Reddit user HiAerie1 commented in a parallel universe thread saying that for a single day his parents faces swapped. People obviously asked for more details. He said, I woke up in the morning and at first I didn't realize anything was weird because it was like 6 a.m. and I was still half asleep. But after showering for school and waking up a bit, I noticed that there was something weird about my mom. Then I realized it wasn't my mom, it was my dad, but he had my mom's face. I was going to say something, but then my little brother got up and was like, Good morning, dad, like everything was normal. Then, before I had time to process everything, I had to leave for school. Everything was fine at school and I almost forgot all about it. But when I got 
got home, I saw my dad again, still with my mom's face. Then my mom walks in and starts talking to him, and she has his face. At this point, I am just dumbfounded. I have no idea what's going on. So I just sit down and start doing my homework. And when my little brothers get back from school, they just act like nothing is wrong. So I just decided to go with it and not say anything at all. I mean, I didn't want them to think I was going crazy or anything. I woke up the next morning and everything is just back to normal. But I still have dreams about it sometimes. Moving on to number seven now, we have the garden. This is a strange one that comes from Stefan1403, whose story involves three generations of his family. Family. He said, it was summer and my grandfather, grandmother, mom and I were working in the garden. It's pretty big and there's a lot of grass to be mowed and stuff like that. After all the work, my mom would always ask me to go and get some soda because everyone was thirsty from working. It was in the evening, but still pretty warm. After everyone had their soda, my mom asked me to put it in the back of the fridge, which was in the basement. Used as a living area, only a small part of it is really storage. So. I go to the basement, and please note, the room with the fridge is like 20 or 30 seconds from the exit, and you have to pass two doors with those flappy anti-fly curtains. I put the soda in the fridge, close the fridge, and walk out. Seems normal, right? Except I had to do this three times. The soda kept reappearing whenever I put it in the fridge and turned my back on it. Everyone was outside and there was only one bottle of soda in the whole room. To this day, I am still confused over what exactly happened. There have probably been more moments like this in my life, but this is the one that I remember the most. At the number six spot now, guys, we have crossed wires. This one involves answering machines, hopefully. Some of you guys aren't too young to even know what they are. The story comes from Reddit user Kill All Extremists. They said, this happened about 15 years ago. I called my friend up and he wasn't home, so I left a message on his answering machine. I said, hey, it's me. Sorry I missed you. Call you later. Bye. And then I hung up and left the house. I made no other calls. Later that day, he called back and he says, wow, that was quite a message you left. Who was that girl you were talking to? I was like, what are you talking about? I wasn't talking to any girl. Well, as it turns out, the message didn't end after I said bye. I actually had to go over to his house and listen to this message a few times for myself. After my initial message that I did leave, as I already quoted, there was a slight pause and it continues on for another 30 to 40 seconds or so with me talking to some girl. It was my voice, but a conversation I never had with a girl whose voice I didn't recognize. You could compare it to the message I know I did leave and the two voices were indistinguishable. Not just the voice, but you know, talking mannerisms. It was my voice. Also references to my occupation and activities were the same. Basically, in this conversation, I was talking to this girl about going skiing, but I had to go down to my shop and work on a car first, which totally correlated to me. Then the message just stopped. It was recorded on one of those digital answering machines that recorded the message to a chip, so there was no tape I could have taken and had analyzed, unfortunately. Also, neither I nor my friend had party lines, so that's not an explanation. It was very freaky, and I just can't explain it. Moving on to the number five spot now, we have the closet. To get to Narnia, you have to go through the wardrobe. Everyone knows that. Do they also lead to other parallel worlds though? Reddit user Minus Flower said, in my parents' bedroom was this really large master closet. It was technically just one closet, but it had two doors going into it. Between the two doors was a high shelf and a hanging rod for clothes. So it functioned like two separate walk-in closets, but you could walk from one to the other by ducking under any clothes hung in the middle. One night, she was in her side of the closet and she saw through the gap between the shelf and the clothes rod, my dad walk into his side of the closet. She heard the metal coat hanger sliding as he looked for something to wear and saw the clothes in the middle sway as they were brushed from side to side. From her side of the closet, she started talking to him about something random. Then she heard the bathroom door open. She poked her head out of the closet to see my dad clearly just emerging from the shower. He walked to look into his side of the closet and nothing. And up until the moment she poked her head out to look at the bathroom door, she would swear to you she could still see my dad in that closet. Next up, and number four now, we have the money. This one comes from Reddit user ShadowJack00. The story is actually from a friend of theirs. They said, a friend of mine from Toronto was in a bar in New 
New York on a business trip. As he paid for drinks and food a few times during the night, he noticed a woman watching him intently. After a while, she came over and struck up a conversation with him. Eventually, she commented that she noticed he had coloured money in his wallet. She seemed, as he put it, eager to the point of being afraid to mention it. He told her, Yes, he was Canadian and he had some Canadian money in his wallet. She demanded he show her and so he did. She was apparently very disappointed and started to cry a bit but refused to talk about it any further. Feeling bad, he tried to cheer her up and the two of them got a bit hammered together. He admitted that his goal was to not spend the night alone but he did anyway. At one point, he asked her why she wanted to see his Canadian money and after a lot of coaxing and more drinks, she told him. She said that up until a few months before, US money Money had always been different colours. Ones were green, tens were blue, and hundreds were brown. She couldn't remember the other colours, she told him. She said the colours were not bright like Canadian money, but were sort of a set of dark tints. She said the brown hundreds were called bricks because the brown tint they had was similar to a brick. Then she said one day they were all green and she was the only one who seemed to remember them being different colours. My friend pressed her and she said there were other differences too, not just money that she noticed. Popular TV programmes were different or had the wrong actors in the lead roles. There was more but my friend couldn't remember what else she said. After a while, she just started crying, saying she finally thought she had found someone who would convince her she wasn't going crazy and he turned out to be a Canadian instead. Shortly after, she left. And that was the end of that. Moving on to the three now guys, we have Quantum Thief. Now that has to be possibly the coolest name I've ever given to a story on this channel. I bet that will be a movie title one day. Anyway, this one comes from Reddit user Nymaz who said, Ever since I was a kid, I have what I call doubling occasionally happen around me. I put something in a pocket, then later find it in another pocket, as well as the original in the original pocket that I put it in. And yes, it has happened to money before. The most standout example was when I was a teen at camp. All the leaders had engraved plastic name tags and we were issued only one. I used to keep moving mine between my hat and my shirt. At the end of camp, I just crammed all my stuff in a duffel bag and headed home. Later, when I unpacked, the first thing I do is to pull out my hat with the tag on it. Okay, so that's where I had it last, I thought. And of course, a minute later, I pull out a shirt with the same name tag pinned to it. I also experienced a similar phenomenon when I was a kid. For a few years, it happened on a daily basis, but haven't seen it in a long time now. Someone would place something in their pocket or backpack, but when they went to grab it later, it would be missing. I would then reach into my backpack or pocket and pull the item out. I initially got accused a lot of being a thief, but when it happened repeatedly, when I hadn't even been within 20 feet of the victim, my friends and classmates stopped doing so and just kind of accepted that that would always happen around me. Next up at number two now, we have pancakes. This is a very recent one posted to Reddit by user Julesmer, who said, when I was around seven or eight, I distinctly remember going to a restaurant and getting a plate full of fruit and then heading back to my hotel and went to the hot tub. My sister Alex and I were talking about the activities we had done that day and before we knew it, we headed back to our room. Our parents were at the casino and had left us pancakes and a note saying they'd be back in a few hours. We went to bed and had had this dream that there was a bunch of lights with my sister's voice in the background. When I had awoken, me and my sister were in a cabin in a completely different state. I went to wake up my sister and I told her about my dream. It turns out we both had the same one, but instead of me hearing her voice, she heard mine. We both had no clue what to do, so we walked around. There had been a hot tub near our cabin and the same lady working at the other restaurant. We had talked about going to the fruit bar with our parents and had asked them if we drove to a different place while we were sleeping, but they just gave us a strange look and asked us what we were talking about. To this day, me and my sister still talk about what happened that night and think of new theories to explain what happened to us. And finally at number one now, we have Janet's dead. It would be pretty terrifying if someone your family thought was dead just walked into your home. It would be even more terrifying though if you were the only one who realised it. This Reddit user said, last night I was on the phone with my mom and she 
told me to come over for dinner. Everything was going great. Then suddenly she comes out with, Janet is going to be there. I was like, very funny mom, great one. But in my head I was thinking, that's really not funny. Why would you say something like that? Then my mom keeps going on with this. You haven't seen her in forever. It'll be nice. Janet died last year though. I have a vivid memory of it. I did not attend the funeral, but I remember everyone talking about it and making a scene of it because she died young. She died of cancer and I remember her husband coming to visit and being very depressed. I never saw her body or anything, but I am 1000% certain this woman is dead and I remember many family members talking about it. I never saw the body or visited her grave and I wasn't that close with her so I never had much grief over it. But I have vivid memories of her dying and my relatives being depressed over it. I was really weirded out by my mom on the phone and finally I came out and said, Janet's dead, what are you talking about? And my mom just kept talking like it was ridiculous or like I was kidding around. She jokingly said, she's back or something like that. I asked my dad later on and he looked at me like I was insane. I also can't find the obituary online but I never looked for it to begin with. All right, at number 10, we're gonna be kicking off this list with the multiverse theory. If anyone at home is not a fan of science or has never picked up a comic book, then you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Information on this topic goes deeper than a fat kid in a ball pit so I'm going to give you the Coles notes on this. Since 1957 when physicist Hugh Everett first suggested it, scientists have proposed the idea that we could be living in an infinite landscape of universes. There are a ton of theories on how this multiverse is composed and I am not smart enough to break them all down for you but I'll give you one example. A common idea is that there's a landscape of universes which are flat and go on forever with universes sitting beside each other. Because this landscape is infinite, you can have universes that are drastically different. There could be universes where superheroes are real and people read comic books about ordinary people to try and escape the stress of their super filled life. And there could be universes that are so similar to ours but slightly off. Like you could have blonde hair instead of brown hair, or Twinkies could be healthy. With that tragic performance from Che, now coming in at number nine are the crossroads. So back in November of 1986, Pedro Oliva Ramirez was making his way from Sabia to his home in Alcala de Quadaira. Kodaira? I hope I said that right. As he was turning a corner, he found himself on a six lane highway that had never been on the route before. Either way, he hadn't done the journey for a while, so he assumed it could have been new. He continued down the highway, but he started seeing weird things like 20 story housing units, two feet high grass bordering the highway, and just unidentified metallic structures. After finally clocking something was off, he suddenly felt hot as hell in the car and started hearing voices in the distance, one of them which was telling him he was in another country in a different hemisphere. An hour into the drive to seemingly nowhere, Pedro finally gets to a sign pointing three ways. We have Malaga, Sabia, and Alcalabaya. Hope I said that right, I probably didn't. He took the Sabia detour and five minutes later he was outside of his house in Alcala de Guadaira, which literally wasn't even possible because he took the route which would have taken him back the way he came, meaning further away from his house. Like how did man like Pedro drive three hours to a sign and then end up back at home within five minutes? He even tried retracing his route but never found the crossroad or six lane highway again. And a six lane highway going missing? That is a big deal you guys. At number eight we have Deja Vu. That Feeling when you swear you've seen something before, like you can feel it in your bones. Some people think it could be your instincts telling you what's going to happen, maybe like a spidey sense. Maybe we all have spidey sense, we just don't know how to use it yet. Where other people say it's a delay in the communication between your left and right side of your brain. It's like when you're in a conversation with a group of people and you say something, then someone in the group says the exact same thing that you just said and you're like, you never listen to me, you're being a bad friend. But what if it's none of these things? What if it's you tapping into the frequency of another universe for just a moment? If parallel universe theory is right, there could be infinite universes. So there could be a universe exactly like this one, but just a little bit ahead. Deja vu could be you getting a glimpse into this space for a moment and then returning back to our reality. This was suggested by physicist Michio Kaku in his book Parallel Worlds. Maybe every time you feel like you've been somewhere before, it's another version 
version of you that has been, and for a brief moment you're connecting to them. If I could tap into this ability, I would make so much money gambling. Filling our number 7 slot is Lesbia. So back in 1905, a man was caught by police in Paris for attempting to steal a loaf of bread. And I mean geez you guys it's just bread, just let him have it, cut the man some slack. They ended up taking him to the station and questioning him and they soon realised he couldn't speak a language. He didn't understand or speak French, he spoke something that sounded like Esperanto but wasn't and had different grammar to it. After trying to communicate with him for hours, they finally found a way to ask him where he was from, to which he replied Lesbia. And at the time the police just thought that was his way of saying he was from Lisbon, but then he didn't understand or speak Portuguese, which sus, very sus, but again it's fine because he could have been from Lisbon but been brought up somewhere else and never learned the language. Like it is fine, I will give you the benefit of the doubt. Strange man. But then, when given a map of Portugal, he had no clue what he was looking at whatsoever, so the officers eventually realised the man meant Lisbia was a country. We're at no. No one knows what happened to the man or where he went, but maybe he just crossed over back to his universe and made his way back to Lisbia. I don't know. Can I get a visa? I'd like one. For number six, we have strange artifacts. There have been items that are still puzzling archaeologists as to where they have come from and how old they are. It's like when you wake up after a blackout and you find a half eaten, uncooked, frozen pizza on your floor and you have 30 text messages sent out to your ex and you're like, what happened last night? Well, this is kind of like that, but with more science. One of the best examples of this is the London Hammer. It was discovered in 1936 and it seems to be a man made iron hammer. Hammer, but it was found in a mound of rock that's over 400 million years old. And I might be wrong about this, but I don't think there was any hammers back 400 million years ago. How did a human tool work its way all the way back to before the dinosaurs? Perhaps it was blasted through a wormhole from another dimension. Hopefully not with the guy who made it still holding on to it. One minute you're blacksmithing a sword and the next you're getting devoured by an 8 foot tall centipede. There was also the blue rock that was discovered in Sierra Leone. This rock was sent to research labs around the world but no one was able to identify its origin or link it to any other known rocks. Coming in at number 5 are the beetles. And this one is debatable because it really comes down to whether we want to believe this person or not, so let's just go with it. So back in 2009, James Richards was driving home in California with his dog. We love a good doggo appearance. You are a good boy. Don't let anybody tell you different. Now he ends up pulling over because the dog has to pee and we all know dogs have 3 second attention spans so off it goes chasing a rabbit. Now James springs into action and starts chasing after her but trips and hits his head on a rock and ends up unconscious. Like already this is sound like a very bad remake of Alice in Wonderland without the hallucinogenics so what is going on here? Now when James finally woke up, he was next to an odd machine and a man called Jonas who claimed he found his body while on a work trip for the interdimensional travel agency that he worked for. Do you have openings, Jonas? Can I apply? What do you need? What do you need for the CV? I'm there for it. Either way, they end up talking for absolutely ages and start discussing the differences in pop culture because that's apparently the number one thing you want to know about a parallel universe, like not world leaders or climate change, pop culture. Yes, I'm a nerd. Either way, James ended up finding out that in Jonas's universe or dimension, the Beatles also existed. They were all still alive and they were all making music. And I know anyone can say that, but Jonas even gave him a cassette called Everyday Chemistry, which had Beatles songs on it that never existed in our dimension. Those songs are actually on the BeatlesNeverBrokeUp.com if you do want to check them out. But damn, Jonas, you have my attention now. All right, at number four, we have the Mary Celeste. This one has been baffling people for centuries. It's one of the greatest missing person stories of all time. It was back in 1872 when the Mary Celeste set sail. It was a cargo ship packed with booze and it never made it to its destination. It was found off the coast of Portugal with its entire crew missing. Not only that, but the cargo was intact, so they weren't attacked by pirates. The crew still had their belongings on board, so it was not likely that they left by their own will. There's a chance that the whole crew went mad and jumped overboard, or a portal from another dimension opened up and they all got sucked into a different 
different universe. There could have been a bunch of dudes from the 17th century running around in a futuristic world. It would have been like every primetime show from the 90s with a time travel plot. They're from the past, but now they're in the future. What will they do? Find out watching Anchored in Time, 8 p.m. on Fox. Filling our number three slot is the wrong Riverside. This one follows a woman called Carol Chase McElhaney who is driving from San Bernardino to Paris, California. Now, on her way there, she passed a sign for Riverside, which is where she grew up. So she decided to make the pit stop there to relive her childhood and have some nostalgic vibes because we all love a cheeky nostalgic vibe, don't we? She started driving to the street she grew up on, but her old house was nowhere to be found and none of the houses were recognizable to her at all. And it wasn't like everything had been bulldozed over and reconstructed, it just wasn't the same. Straight up, it was different. Freaked out, Carol drove to her grandma's old street to find that that was looking different as well. She then went to the cemetery where both her grandparents were buried to find no cemetery at all, but a fenced up a lot with weeds everywhere in its place. At this point, Carol was like, am I being punked? Where is Ashton Kutcher? Like, is he gonna come out? As a final grasp at sanity, she went to University Avenue, a street where there were usually restaurants and hotels, but now there was just a bunch of graffiti and rundown buildings. And the people there were just off. No one was smiling, they were all wearing black, and Carol was getting the feeling that if she spoke to any of them, she'd be stuck in that place forever. But our girl did not give up there. She spent the next few hours trying to find something from her past in Riverside, and when she came up short, she finally went home. Years later, Carol's father died and was going to be buried at the same cemetery in Riverside, and when Carol arrived in town, everything was how it was from when she was young. So how did she happen upon a Riverside from a different dimension that was just bad, and now she's back in the regular one? I don't get it. I don't get it. And at number two, we have the cold spot. When you flip your pillow over and it's cold on the other side, that's because there's a small amount of cold radiation buildup on the other side of your pillow from a parallel universe. That thing I just said, that is completely made up. Cold radiation? I'm an idiot. The cold spot is actually an area in our universe that is 1.8 billion light years away. Through what's called microwave background mapping, we've been able to map the cosmic rays in the universe, possibly back to the Big Bang. Through this technology, scientists were able to locate this cold spot. The reason this massive field was colder was because it had 20% less mass in it than it should. Why does this area have less mass? Well, because it was just hot girl summer. Don't you remember? Sorry if this cold spot is too skinny for you. Well, Actually, some scientists think that this could be from another universe crashing into ours. The force of these universes colliding caused a massive amount of energy to fly out, thus making the area colder. This could be the doorway into another universe where the laws of physics are completely different from what we understand. Now you just need to make the 1.8 billion light year trip to get there. And finally, at number one is the interdimensional tunnel. Now this story actually came from the book Hunt for the Skinwalker, and this particular story is about the Skinwalker Ranch in Utah. Now this ranch is infamous for strange happenings. People who have spent the night there have seen things they don't even know how to talk about or explain. So how the hell am I meant to tell you guys about them? I can't. Well in this book, a hunter that the author met describes seeing an interdimensional tunnel open up on the ranch. He saw it through his binoculars and initially it just looked like a bright yellow circle, but it started getting deeper and deeper and that wasn't even the worst part. Then a huge faceless creature crawled out of the circle and and then disappeared into the woods and mind you this massive shining portal was still open for business and ready to pump out more faceless monsters. Like are we just gonna push that under the rug? I guess so. The hunter left the area ASAP Rocky and never went back there but he's been utterly convinced ever since that tunnel or portal was to another dimension or universe and honey I believe you. You're preaching to the converted. Starting off in our number 10 spot we have the infinite versions of our universe. Okay. Let's start off at the beginning. Well, the beginning of what is our observable universe, which was the Big Bang that happened 13.8 billion years ago. This is when our observable universe was born, which is finite, but the universe itself, which our universe is a small part of, is infinite and could have been born infinite. Since we can put a timeline on when our universe came into existence, which is that 13.8 billion years we just talked about, we can place a timeline on the things in our own universe. Everything in our universe is finite. But beyond our universe and the stars and galaxies and matter and all of that sciencey stuff, 
is the universe, which would lead us to believe that there are many more infinite universes that are just like our own, but that are beyond our knowledge because of the fact that the speed of light, as well as the beginning of ours, the Big Bang, is finite. If there is an infinite amount of universe out there, then it only seems reasonable to believe that the same sort of creation of our finite universe happened an infinite amount of times. In our number nine spot today, we have infinite universes. Piggybacking off of that last point, we have the fact that there just might be even more universes. Like, not just more of our kind of universe, but more of the universe. The Big Bang started off our universe, but it was not the beginning of everything. The Big Bang, which we all know happened when? 13.8 billion years ago was the first time the universe could be described as hot, dense, and full of matter and antimatter and radiation and all of that, but there was stuff going on before that happened. Prior to the Big Bang, there was a period of cosmic inflation. This inflation leads to the growing of space-time, and this means that if that period occurred for an infinite amount of time, there could be an infinite amount of universes that are all finite, and one of these universes happens to contain ours. Does that make sense? This video really is all a person needs to feel exceptionally small and very insignificant. In our number eight spot today, we have daughter universes. Before I dive into this one, guys, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far. Let's try and make this the universe where this video has the most likes. Let's do it. This one is just a theory about if there are multiple parallel universes that exist and what they contain. This is where the theory of daughter universes comes into play. It is possible that multiple universes may follow the theory of quantum mechanics, which is how subatomic particles behave. Following the laws of probability, the daughter universes happen when you are faced with a decision. In our reality, you make your decision and it plays out one way, but in the daughter universes, they would each involve you making every other decision you could have made in that moment, which would then lead to whatever outcome that decision would have ended up leading to. This just means that there may be a universe for the opposite of every decision you've ever made in your life, and one for every decision anyone has ever made. How likely is this? I'm not sure, but if we ever find a way to jump to other universes, there goes the days of regret. In our number seven spot today, we have bubble universes. For this one, we need to imagine our universe as a bubble, which it kind of is. The swelling bubble of our universe is just one bubble among many. Well, as we all now know, it is possibly just one among an infinite amount, all of which are swelling and expanding. All these bubbles make up the multiverse. This itself is of course just a theory that was made in an attempt to understand the origins and beginnings of our universe, but now it is being researched further. Physicists have begun studies on how and when universes might collide and bubble up together. I do understand that this is not concrete proof or evidence, but we wouldn't be researching it if it wasn't a possibility. This research could potentially lead us in the direction where we get to see some real proof, or at the very least, give us a better understanding into the theories of how multiple universes exist and how they could potentially interact with one another. In our number six spot today, we have the lack of evidence. This evidence is more so about the lack of evidence there is to say that the multiverse doesn't exist. Many scientists find the idea of the multiverse alarming or even unscientific because of the fact that there's no way for us to test for it. There is no way to make predictions that fall in line with data and no way to really verify its existence, whether it's one parallel universe or an infinite amount. But there isn't really any evidence or or data to support the theory that we are the only universe that exists. If our universe was created basically out of happenstance, what could stop another universe from being created at the same time or out of a similar happenstance? The idea and theory of the multiverse itself is relatively quite young and new, so it is possible that we will find the evidence to persuade most of us to one side or another, but as of right now, Anything is possible. And maybe in another parallel universe, we already know all about the existence of this one. Maybe there's another me watching me make this video being like, oh, you don't know anything. In our number five spot today, we have the cold spot. The cold spot was first discovered in 2004, and it is basically just what it sounds like. It's an area in the universe that is slightly colder than that surrounding it. 
And when I say slightly, I really do mean very slightly. But when I call it an area, I'm talking about a huge one as it is around 1.8 billion light years across. It was first believed that this area may be colder due to a lack of galaxies, but a newer study suggested that that is not possible, which led researchers down a different path in search of new theories as to why the cold spot exists. One of the most exciting is the theory that this may have occurred due to a collision between our universe and another bubble universe. A bubble universe is what we just spoke about in the last part and they make up the multiverse, which would be the uncountable realms that all sit side by side, but that are in higher dimensions than our senses are able to interpret. This of course is a theory and it will require a lot of time and research before we can say for certain, but it truly is kind of crazy to think that a huge colder area of the universe could be due to a bump in with another universe entirely. In our number four spot today, we have the CMB. After the Big Bang, it took around 300,000 years for things to cool down enough in order to allow atoms to form and to allow light to travel freely. This was known as the recombination, and during this time, that is when the cosmic microwave background began. The CMB is electromagnetic radiation that fills all of space, and while the space in between stars and planets and such may seem to be completely dark, the CMB is there and can sometimes, through sensitive enough technology, be seen as a kind of glow. So, how how does this play into what we're talking about today? Well, scientists noticed a sort of bruise on the CMB during research, which left them wondering why. This is what led to this next parallel universe theory. If our universes are all like bubbles and one bumps into the other, it's possible that they may merge even just for a second. This could cause some parts of one universe to spill into the other before eventually parting ways again, but this collision surely would leave some sort of a mark. And that mark just may be the bruise we saw in the CMB. In our number three spot today, we have the CMB part two. So you know what the CMB is now, and there's another thing we are looking for in it that might give us a sign of the multiverse. We thought we found evidence of this back in 2014, but it may have been a false detection, but we continue to look. Gravitational waves, which are ripples in space and time, are what we are looking for right now. The waves would have been left over from the Big Bang, and they could be putting tiny curls into the CMB. If found, this would prove the theory of cosmic infinity Inflation, which we discussed close to the beginning of this video in number nine, which would then lead us to the creation of multiple universes. It's all linked together in the most insane ways, but the universe is very cool and very complex. In our number two spot today, we have the Mandela Effect. So thinking about what we just talked about with the bruise and the CMB, and if our bubble universes really did collide with some other universe, and they had a moment where they may have been interconnected in some way, then this would explain the Mandela Effect. If you don't know, the Mandela Effect began being widely recognized when people began to swear that they could remember Nelson Mandela passing away in the 1980s. This is of course weird since he actually passed away in 2013. This time discrepancy had people obviously confused and it has happened with many other things such as the Berenstein Bears, the movie Kazam, and honestly a whole bunch of things. There are many theories as to why the Mandela Effect happens and one of them certainly is the belief in multiple universes and some sort of crossover happening between the two. This coupled with the possibility of colliding universes is hard to comprehend, but it does kind of make sense. In our number one spot today, we have the strange particle. This might be the most concrete evidence, but we still don't really know what it means. This evidence came to us originally in 2016, but it took a few years for it to be interpreted in the way that might suggest the potential of a parallel universe. During experiments and research in the Antarctic, researchers captured what seemed to be the signal of a high energy particle. This would be all well and fine, except for the fact that instead of coming down from above, this particle seemed to be exploding out of the ground. Despite multiple attempts to explain why the signal was appearing this way, scientists were left with not a lot of options, and one of those has to do with the fact that this strange particle just may be proof of another parallel universe that is both exceptionally similar, but also the complete opposite of our own. In order to explain this particle, there would need to be the existence of another universe that was created during the same Big Bang that created our own and exists in parallel with ours but this universe would have to be a mirror of our own, where left is right and right is left and positive is negative and time runs backwards. 
sense. It's both the most simple and most complex idea that all started with one tiny, strange particle. Starting off at number 10 now, we have The Being. We're starting off with a great one here. This Reddit user said, a lot of this story takes place a couple of years ago. However, the final part happened just a couple of nights ago, so I figured I should post it. This all sort of started two years ago. I was walking my puppy down to the beach after dinner. She splashed around in the water a bit. Not very important to this story. What is important is when I was walking her back to my house, there was a man with the biggest smile on his face just walking down the sidewalk with over exaggerated arm movements. As we passed, he politely said good evening to me. A couple of months later, I was in the car with my mom and sister. That same man was walking down the sidewalk and my sister pointed out his odd arm motion. Almost immediately, my mom told her to not make fun of him and that is just something he does. She then quickly said she's known him for a while. A couple of weeks ago, I was out jogging at night. Since it was late, I was very paranoid when I was out, so I was looking all around the whole time. For a couple of minutes, I was just staring ahead. There was no way I could have missed anything. Who else showed up almost out of thin air? That same exact man. There was something noticeably different. Everything about him had reversed. The once overjoyed man had an almost cartoonishly huge frown and was walking with the biggest slump. He passed by me without saying a single thing, which seemed odd just for politeness sake. I got home and immediately told both of my parents about the encounter. While attempting to explain the whole thing to my parents, my mom looked incredibly confused. She told me she had no idea who the man was, even after I reminded her about the car ride where he showed up. Finally, two days ago, I saw the man again. He was on the other side of the street from me. There was absolutely nowhere for him to go. But when I turned around, he was nowhere to be seen. This whole thing has me incredibly freaked out. I haven't even been jogging since the incident. I can't even explain the feeling I had the last two times I saw him. I just know I've never felt more disturbed in my life and I have no idea why. Both times seeing the man at night, I felt shaken to my very core. If anyone has any theories, I would love to hear them. Next up at number nine now, we have the husband glitch. They say that people and places can phase between parallel worlds, but can text messages. This story comes from Reddit user Aunt Masto, who said, I'm a newlywed. We've been married less than a month when I woke up at 5.30 a.m. next to my husband's sleeping form and saw a notification on my phone. It was a text from him, Sam, with a love heart, sent at midnight. Sam said, who is this? Now, I'm pretty sure that Sam was stretched out next to me, snoring away at midnight. I'm a light sleeper, and it's likely I would have woken if he hadn't got out of bed or turned on his phone. Still, stranger things have happened. I figured he was playing a weird joke on me or something. I decided to play along, so I wrote back, who is this? Seconds later, Sam replied, I asked you first. I could feel Sam pressed against my right side, warm and breathing regularly. I looked at his nightstand and confirmed his phone was still there, dark and silent. I said, seriously, who is this? Why are you coming up on my phone under one of my contacts' names? Sam said, what name am I under? I said, obviously there's some cross wires here somewhere. We don't know each other. Sam said, are you in? And it was the name of the town that we both lived in. I said, yes, are you? He said, yes. I said, okay, there you go. Wires are crossed. It's weird, but I'm sure it happens. He said, we must live near each other. What street are you on? I tried to change the subject because I definitely did not want to tell this person the street that I was on. I asked him, do I come up on your phone under someone else's name? Sam said, I was looking through my contacts and I saw one that I didn't remember created under the name Wi-Fi with a heart like this next to it. I was just curious who this was. I live on Violet Street, by the way. I went cold. My husband's nickname for me is Wi-Fi, but pronounced Wi-Fi. It's a silly inside joke. No one knows about it but us, or so I had thought. And we do live on Violet Street, and we both make little love hearts next to each other's names. And something about this person's writing style was so familiar. I confirmed that my husband was still slumbering next to me. His phone was still on the nightstand. Someone was messing with me. I turned my phone off, got up, and got ready for work. Later that morning, I showed the text to Sam, who was baffled. His phone had no messages on it. He texted me to test things out, and his message, hi, popped up right underneath the last message the other Sam had sent to me. That one weirds me out. Give me your theories, guys, please. Moving on to number eight now, we have the closet. Have you guys ever seen someone that looks a lot like you? You probably think nothing of it, but sometimes it makes people really question their own reality. Reddit user, please probe me, nice name, said, I used to work at a dog rescue in the Midwest before moving home to the East Coast. It was a small rescue, about 10 employees max, and we were all tightly knit. Nobody there resembled me. I am exceptionally short and have different hair than anyone there. So it was wasn't easy to mistake someone
someone else for me or vice versa. The place was also haunted. We all heard a female voice yelling at us or singing near us when we were completely alone. Almost everyone saw apparitions or reflections when nobody was there. So this place was already full of some weird energy to begin with. Then it got weirder. During my last couple of months, co-workers started sending me odd texts. They would text me on my days off asking me why I was there and where I had just disappeared to. I would always reply that I wasn't there. While I was there, occasionally someone would jump at the sight of me and say something like, what the hell, you were just outside, I saw you through the window, or I just saw you in the storage room, how did you get here so fast? They couldn't understand how I'd gotten from point A to point B impossibly fast. Every time I would be baffled and explain that I wasn't where they thought I was before. A good example that I remember was this one. I was in the backyard. The only door in from there goes through the main adoption room, then exits on the other end about 50 feet away into a hallway containing a kitchen and some private meeting rooms. I walked in from outside and saw my co-worker coming into the room from the hallway. She looked at me and gasped. Then she opened the door behind her to the hallway. She explained that she had just seen me in the kitchen doing dishes, but when she opened the door, which lay about six feet beyond the kitchen door, there I was coming in from the outside. It was actually impossible. This is where we started to understand that something very strange was going on. We all sat around and talked about it, and it turned out almost everyone was seeing a phantom version of me. Every time they saw it, it was turned around and didn't interact with them. It would get into some strange places too. For example, someone watched me go into the closet holding the water tank and followed me asking me some questions about work matters. As soon as they turned into the closet, I was gone. Now I personally hadn't walked into that closet at all around that time, let alone on that day. My best guess is that I was in the middle of making a major life decision about either staying in this city at this job and taking a promotion or coming back to the east coast. The decision was extremely stressful for me to make as I really loved that job. I'm surmising that my energy literally just split somehow and that a parallel version of me was hanging around there after I endured so much angst over staying or leaving. If I want to get super weird about it, I could say that maybe in another reality I decided to stay there and maybe those two timelines were intersecting and glitching onto one another. They continued to see me after I moved home thousands of miles away. Next up at number six now, we have the vanishing road. Have you ever seen something disappear? I don't mean actually in front of your eyes, I mean it was there one day and the next it was just gone. Was that your poor memory? Maybe your eyes playing tricks on you? Reddit user Padjo95 has this story that might make you think it's something else. They said, I swear up and down that this actually happened. About four years ago, I lived in this fairly small fly speck of a town. At the time, I had lived there for about 12 years, so I knew my way around. Our house was about a mile and a half away from the nearest neighborhood. Our mom intentionally picked that house due to the lack of neighbors. It was tucked away on a back road with the woods surrounding it. Every now and again, I liked to take walks with my little brother, who at the time was about 13. We decided to do just that. We headed up the road and decided to try and find a new path or a new clearing that we hadn't discovered yet. And we noticed something a little shocking. Just off the road that led almost directly to the neighborhood, there was a brand new paved road. Every road in that part of town was a gravel road, so seeing an out of place paved road was pretty unusual. We stared at it for a while and came to the conclusion that it must have been made within the last few days due to the modern but slow growth of the town. However, we had no explanation for how they did it so fast. We decided to explore it a bit. I remember as soon as we set foot on the road, the air became noticeably colder by at least five degrees. The road itself was a black pavement, but no dividing lines. It was surrounded by some thick red trees that resembled redwoods, but they were too short and non-native to our state in southern Arkansas. We walked on the road for about three miles until we decided to head back due to it getting dark. When we got off the road, we felt the temperature go back up. My brother and I agreed to explore it the next day. At roughly noon the following day, we set back out to explore this place, only to discover that the entire road was now missing. When I say missing, I mean the trees that were cleared to make it had apparently grown back with no sign of the redwood-like trees. We even began to explore the woods once more, but found no sign that it ever existed. When we asked our parents about it, they said they knew nothing about any new road work being done near us. Has anyone ever experienced anything like this? Moving on to number five now, we have the play. There are theories that with every moment that passes in time, an infinite amount of alternate realities are born. Sometimes people claim to see them, like Reddit user 
airmail dolphin who said, I had an experience when I was a teenager that has led me to believe that I am now living in an alternate timeline. When I was a teenager, I would occasionally get 30 second or so glimpses into the future in dreams. Unfortunately, these glimpses were always of no real use since there would be random glimpses into my ordinary life that would come true over the course of about a week. Well, one time I had a glimpse that I was cast in a play in high school and during the course of a rehearsal, I knocked over something and everyone there laughed at me. Long story short, I was cast in a play and I could see the same situation starting to unfold, so I took the object in question and moved it as far away from myself as I could. I didn't end up knocking it over and life continued on. But now I still have the memory of how things could have unfolded. Next to number three now, we have the senses. This is a really weird one from Jimmy Soul on Reddit. It sparked a huge debate about what the explanation for this was. Let's just hear it first before we try and explain it ourselves. They said, while at a festival, a man walked up to me and stared me dead in the eyes. His irises were so dark that it was impossible for me to distinguish his pupils. He spoke and said, what was that? Do you see it? I suddenly saw a bright array of colors surrounding him, much like what I'd call an aura. Can you hear it? He said. The aura faded away and I heard a bunch of high pitched harmonic hums resembling an ensemble of singing bowls. Then he said, perhaps you can smell it. The sound was no longer present, but I smelled an indescribable fragrance. This might be a stretch, but I thought it smelled like lavender. Then he said, or can you taste it? I experienced a taste in my mouth similar to that of a cough drop. My mind was blown. From what I experienced, this man was playing with my senses simply by looking at me and speaking. It was as if he had a special consciousness. I asked his name and he said, I have no name. He walked away and I never saw him again. Wow, okay guys, so that one was pretty weird. Some people laughed at this story and said that it was just dehydration or maybe he was sleep deprived or that the mystery man had hypnotized him. Others are convinced that this was a being from a parallel universe who was perhaps just as surprised that he could be seen as the storyteller was to see him. Moving on to number two now, we have Gavin. This is one that I could have put in a time traveling video or a parallel universe video. Just see what you guys make of it. Reddit user Theus Eus said, now this happened when I was around 16 years old. I was a fairly normal kid, spent a bit too much time on the computer though, so I made a lot of friends with both nerdy kids and popular kids. It all starts when I met this nerdy kid who I'll call Gavin for the sake of the story. Gavin and I started becoming decent friends because of our interest in WoW. Gavin was a really socially awkward guy in real life, although he's a cool dude to talk to online. He's also a genius who has an IQ of around 180 as far as I remember. I did the same test that he did in school and got 103, so it's the real deal. Gavin and I came to each other's houses a lot after we became good friends. We would chill, play WoW, watch videos on YouTube, play chess, that sort of thing. He was a pretty cool guy and soon enough he was one of my best friends. One day I decided to go over to his house uninvited. It might have been the wrong move but I was a teenager at the time and I just thought we were really good friends so it was cool. I knocked on his door and this older looking guy opened. He was around 40. He had a little bit of grey hair and a beard. Now at first I assumed this was Gavin's dad because they looked eerily similar but then I remember that Gavin didn't live with his dad. I then assumed that he was a relative. I asked him if Gavin was home. He laughed and told me that he is Gavin. I found this a bit weird but it could have been a coincidence or Gavin was simply named after his uncle. I told him that I'm looking for a 16 year old Gavin, described him to the guy and he started looking uneasy. After some hesitation he said Gavin was not home. I asked him when he was going to get home and didn't really go into questioning who he was and he gave me a time after thinking for a few seconds. So then I came over at the given time and suddenly my 16 year old friend Gavin opened the door. I told him that his relative was there. He told me that he has no relative with the same name as him and he also told me that he was home at the time I came and met that 40 year old. We both found this extremely weird and our only explanation is time travel. I still keep in touch with Gavin who happens to be studying quantum mechanics at the time. We haven't told anyone this story. <music> 